Halloween. Spooky, but also useful as a prompt for creating a little 3D animation. Now, I admit my concept isn't exactly fresh. It's based off of the videos you used to see of people pranking their friends with a maze game that would result in a jump scare, causing them to jump out of their chair and wave their arms around in a hilarious manner. Well, I was thinking, what would scare a pumpkin man? Maybe the contents of his brain served up as a delicious pie? That would freak the hell out of me. As with most ideas, I like to get started by first drawing a character in Procreate. Uh, I also sketched out some key poses as well, just to get a feel for the expressions. And I thought I'd take this even one step further by trying out some of the animation assist features to put together a little test animation. Also expanded upon the initial little animation test by importing it as an MP4 into Blender and setting up a grease pencil object and then using Blender to animate uh, a slightly more detailed example, like kind of like a pencil test really. So I wanted to get, without the limitation of any meshes or anything like that, a real feel for an exaggerated movement. Something which I don't usually do, so I thought it'd be nice to, you know, no holes barred, no restrictions, get an example of the motion I like, and then work out how to get it in 3D later. I also started playing around with this Pixaki app, which is a really great way to do pixel art. I thought I'd create the initial design for the maze game layout, as well as the jump scare kind of surprise. Everything was sculpted in Nomad Sculpt originally, uh, using uh, booleans to cut out the middle of the pumpkin, as well as the eye, eye holes was super handy. And also in an effort to stay away from my desk, I thought I'd create the additional uh, head expressions and then export it to GLTF, ready to import into Blender. Bringing in the objects from Nomad Sculpt is pretty much a breeze. Um, for a lot of them that weren't animated or deformed in any way, all that was needed was to set up a material, plug in the color attribute that was generated with the vertex painting in Nomad Sculpt, and also adding a roughness mask here, which is just a Musgrave texture plugged into a map range. I have another YouTube video about it, maybe I'll pin it to the top. The parts that did need to deform were retopologized as their original geometry was immensely dense. So that was retopologized with the quad remesh add on, which gives a pretty decent result. Then adding a multi resolution modifier, increasing those subdivisions, and adding a shrink wrap modifier, and selecting our initial high res mesh. Switching our wrap method to project on the positive and negative. Then, if we hide our high res, you can see we have all of those nice sculpt details from Nomad Sculpt now in a very controllable and deformable mesh. All we need to do is apply that shrink wrap modifier and we're ready to go. Except for the colors here. So, in order to copy them across, I linked the materials, went into the mesh options created a new color attribute that matched the spec brought in from Nomad Sculpt, then used a data transfer modifier, selected the source, selected face corner data, and chose color, and then move our high res mesh over the top of our low res. Although I did ultimately find myself unwrapping the mesh because I wanted to add stripes and vertex paint and multi-res modifier was causing issues. The heads were created in pretty much the same way, again unwrapping them, but this time using the smart UV project to save myself a hell of a lot of time, baking in the vertex data from the high resolution, and then continuing to paint over the top. I also did a little bit of modeling for some of the hard surface items, using sub D modeling as well as edge bevel weights to just hold the corners, and the actual screen material was an MP4 video. A video that was created again in, you've guessed it, Blender, this time just creating a heavily subdivided plane and just manually going in and selecting with the circle tool polygons that should be separated. Then the pumpkin pie itself was just modeled using normal sort of sub D modeling, just like the computer monitor, 
and the bit of cream on top was a curve that was then voxel remeshed. The background was just a Voronoi texture with a frame offset along the W input to create that sort of wobbling effect. And the only kind of hacky thing I did to this was add a drop shadow by duplicating the mesh, making it black and giving it a tiny bit of a alpha reduction. So that was exported at quite a low resolution back into the master scene where a shader was set up to import the MP4. And because it's based on a UV, those UV coordinates were modified by a Voronoi texture to allow for some heavy pixelation and uh, making sure as well to switch the interpolation to closest to avoid sometimes you get little white lines between the boxes where it tries to interpolate in a clever way. And the only other real adjustment was adding kind of scan lines here, again with a Voronoi, but like stretched massively in one axis, and then a greater than math node to just isolate only the very top level. Again, our roughness and scratches, which is just a heavily modified Voronoi texture. For the rig, the bones were joined in with some support bones to aid the auto weighting, which did a pretty good job. I didn't really have to adjust eh, much at all other than the hand here because I just sort of flipped it and that just caused havoc with all of the auto weights. The arms and legs were set up with IK and a few pole targets and the mesh swapping of the head as it's completely unique models here was using geometry nodes. I posted about my idea on Twitter and Ben Austin shared a fantastic technique by Will Anderson that created a really handy method which was a hell of a lot more elegant than what I was putting together. As you can see, we just started off with a box piece of geometry, made that a mesh line with just one vertices, then instanced the heads on that one vertices, except the instance index was driven by a number which correlates to the meshes in our heads collection. And that number was offset just here. But as you can see, I also hooked it up to a driver, which looks at the position of this bone and just swaps the meshes out. And I also hooked up a driver to a shape key, which when scaled, it adjusted the mesh just for a little bit more control and in betweening the, just to, just to make the transition from one mesh to the other just a little bit smoother. The additional bone here controls a displacement modifier, which is just a clouds texture with the object coordinates linked to a null, which just sort of moves all over the place and gives it a very subtle wobble, if you can see that. Again, sort of contributing to that stop motion sort of art style. The lighting was set up first with a simple HDRI of a steel mill I went to a while back. It's still only a JPEG, but along with a little bit of gamma adjustment and emission boosting, it works quite well as a base level ambient light. Then introduced a backlight to create some nice rim. Another blue light, which is motivated by the blue light from the monitor here, and just creates a nice sheen over the face. A ceiling light, which is just a large spherical area light, which spills over the wall as well to create a vignette of sorts. And then two area lights on the periphery, which are warm in temperature and just allude to the fact that there might be other rooms with a warm tungsten bulb in. There's also accompanied by, I don't know if you can see it, but if I just switch it on here, some negative fill to create a little bit more contrast and some negative fill in the pumpkin's head as well, create some contrast with the eye sockets. And finally, an emissive object here, which just gives a little bit more spill of monitor light over the scene. The web was a, initially a paint over in Photoshop, which was then used as reference in Blender. And these are just edges. It was drawn out by adding a vertices and hitting extrude. And that, along with a skin modifier, gave it some volume. And then one displace modifier to vary the thickness. And another displace modifier with a Voronoi texture this time to give it a little bit of drooping here and there. And the web shader is really simple, just with 50% transmission and a white colour. Now onto the fog. 
which I think gives a nice little bit of extra atmosphere to the scene. And this was just a cube with a principled volume plugged into it. If we switch this back to textured, there's a spherical gradient and a linear gradient multiplied together to create a mask like that. And then a Voronoi texture is multiplied on top of that as well. And that Voronoi is animating on the Z axis up ever so slowly as well as being distorted, having the mapping distorted along the scale by a noise texture, which again is animating uh, with the W input uh, to create this kind of gently oscillating and rising smoke effect, which is just plugged straight into the density of the principal volume. The animation runs at 12 frames a second, and for the most part was just hand animated straight ahead kind of animation. The only uh, automated bit of animation here was the stem, I guess, of the pumpkin, whereby the secondary animation was with the assistance of the wiggle bones add-on, which automatically calculates the inertia of the bone. I followed the original pencil test uh, reasonably closely, to the point as well where I thought it'd be really nice to keep in some of those action lines, and those were just put in with grease pencil roughly matching the colours of the arms and the head, as well as the mug as well, which again was just animated frame by frame. That animation was then rendered out to a multi-EXR with the beauty pass, uh, so crypto mats and an emission pass. And this is a bit I really like because it's basically creating a, a more analogue vibe to what is very clearly a digital render. So we started off with the beauty pass, took the emission, blurred it slightly, you're not really going to see it on this shot, and added it on top. This is just for the monitor glow when it's on that shot. Uh, added some exposure adjustment. This is just a noise. It's just a single value with a noise modifier on, so when it moves around it flickers ever so slightly as if it were recorded on celluloid film. Then we have a new texture created, which acts as a vignette that masks off a slight value reduction here for the curve, so before and after, and also is used as a mask for a blur. So when that's mixed in, we get, it's hard to see, but teeny tiny bit of edge blur as well, as if the optics got slightly poorer at the edge of the frame. Then the colors were separated, into their channels and then recombined the other end, but not before going through a few blurs. So slight blur on the green channel and even more blur on the red channel. And when it's recombined, we kind of get this nice chromatic aberration effect. Then we have a, another texture that gets introduced, which is just a colored noise here, which is created from the clouds texture option that gets multiplied on top. Uh, and also, this is the only crypto mat I used actually uh, to increase the noise on the background a little bit more than the character. Uh, it just looked a little bit unbalanced, but that sort of corrected that. Exposure, just to bump it up just a little bit. And then this set of nodes is, is kind of experimental. It's um, breaking off and trying to create an unsharp mask. So this kind of effect to then overlay over the original, over the image, to sharpen things slightly. So before, after, oh, you can barely see it. I don't know why I bothered. And you can clearly see that I wasn't particularly happy with the result because I just added a filter node with diamond sharpen on after the overlay, just to boost that sharpness slightly more. This might not come across on YouTube. And then finally, a few color correction nodes. Uh, the curves here, I obviously didn't like, so I muted that. A slight hue shift towards more red colors, and then a hue correct to boost the luminosity of the oranges and the reds a little bit, and also saturate the background a little bit more. And then that gets fed in at the end. And I also set up a split viewer here because it's often handy to see before and after. The music and sound design was made in Cubase. Firstly, the music itself was created with the aid of a MIDI keyboard, uh, playing in a really, really simple tune and using the 
magic 8-bit plug VSTi uh, to create the various simplified square and saw waves. That was also sent to a few filters, um, namely a high pass, which just removes all that horrible low frequency, and a destroyer VST, which just adds tons of distortion, basically making the 8-bit sound sound like it's come out of the worst PC speakers in existence. And added on top of that was the rest of the sound design, which for the most part was just me at my desk moving around, performing alongside the video, uh, mimicking what the character does, but also with the help of uh, some great sounds from freesound.org, like the scream and laugh. Then everything was sent for a little bit of reverb, um, just to give it a tiny bit of room sound. So I hope some of this breakdown video was useful to you. As usual, you can download the Blender files from my Patreon page. Thank you also to my current patron members for supporting this type of content. And if you'd like to see more, then maybe check out the CG playlist. And yeah, I'll, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.